Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for these next two videos that I'm gonna be filming. Basically, I decided to do a tier maker style video ranking, I guess ranking, yeah, ranking different fragrance houses. Next video will be the same concept, but with different brands. You'll see, I've been really into booktube, booktalk, and basically I've seen a lot of ranking videos on booktalk not book talk, booktube. And I've just seen ranking videos forever now. Like people do them for every single thing that I'm interested in. Uh, but I do remember seeing Cascade Scents do a fragrance version. And I think he's the only one who's done it and he did it for niche brands. I think there might be one or two niche, actually, yeah, there are some niche brands in this video, but it's not solely niche. He did it, including like Creed. I think he had bond number nine. So I will link him down below to give him full credit. Um, I did watch his video like a year ago. I think his video is like two years old now. But yeah, I got this inspiration from several people, but I'm going to go ahead and just credit him since he has done something very similar to what I'm gonna be doing today. So without further ado, you could probably see from the thumbnail, some of the brands that are gonna be in this video. Um, I just kind of chose ones that I've tried enough of, or maybe I haven't tried enough of to where I could actually rank them and put them somewhere. Um, but not every brand is gonna be represented in this video, so I could definitely do a part two, but just to know, this is obviously not a fully exhaustive list. I had to make my own tier maker. Um, it's like this website, I'll probably link it down below if you guys wanna do it as well. Maybe we can make this a tag. Here are the tiers. So the top tier is talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, never the same, never been done before. Um, insert Lady Gaga meme here. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before, unafraid to reference or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it, bomb it on it, eat it, give birth to it. And these are houses, oh, here's my cute little laptop. I definitely need to sparkle it up a little bit more. But anyway, um, yeah, these are brands where I feel like they can usually do no wrong in my eyes. They are God tier to me. Amazing. Um, next is we must protect these houses. I just really love these houses. They may have, you know, a bad fragrance here and there or fragrance that I didn't like here and there, but we must protect them. They're amazing and I will continue to look out for their new releases. Next we have, you know, a lot of these are going to be memes or references. So if you don't understand, I will try to include the video so you guys can understand, but it's called the Midwest because everything about it is mid. This is a current TikTok sound. I know it's not so stupid when I have to explain it, but I don't know where this came from, to be completely honest, but it essentially means what it means. Like, I don't know what they're talking about with the Midwest, but just everything about the brand is mid to me. Like, you know, maybe their marketing or the fragrances they put out are like mid, you know, they're not really a must haves to me. They don't really come out with anything incredible show stopping, but you know, it's a safe bet, whatever. Then I have a serve here and there. So this is like less than mid, like they have a good fragrance every once in a while, in my opinion. And then the last one is misunderstood the assignment. Okay, it's just like, why are these brands even around? I don't even know if I will have too many in this category. Actually, I already know there's gonna be one that's probably gonna ruffle some feathers, but let's get into it because I'm eager. Okay, we're already starting off a little bit a little bit juicy with Gehlan. Gehlan. Um, I might be pronouncing it wrong. I apologize. Um, okay, I actually do have to refer to for Grantica. Okay, here we go. So we have, okay, okay, this is exactly why I wanted to look at this because I do have Coconut Fizz. That's the only one I've tried from the Aqua Allegoria line. I have her, like, it's crappy longevity. They're not the best performing fragrances, but I do like the whole concept of the Aqua Allegoria line. You know, I really appreciate their bottles, actually, now that I think about it. The La Petite Robe Noir bottles, I have tried two of them. I'm just not the biggest fan of the two that I've tried, but I know there's a lot more flankers that I haven't tried. Um, and then I don't care for Mon Mongerlan. So should I even say a serve here and there? Okay, because I feel bad. Like some of these houses I genuinely have not smelled enough to where it's so mean for me to dismiss the entire house. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to put it in a serve here and there because I do like Coconut Fizz and I do think the La Petite Robe Noir Intense and the Alfasha that I smelled were good. They just weren't for me. Um, and Mont Galan, it's just not my type of fragrance, but I can see why 
people like it. Okay, we're just gonna move on because I, I'm not super confident in that one, but I said what I said. So YSL, Yves Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent, I'm sorry, I'm so bad. So YSL, okay. I'm debating where to put it. Okay, I'm going back to Fragrantica. Okay, so the ones that I've smelled are Manifesto, Black Opium. Okay, I've also smelled Black Opium, Neon, and Extreme. Don't like either of the flankers, but I do love the original. Montpuri and its flankers are great. I'm not a fan of Lieb, I'll be honest, but it's a super popular fragrance. I have to put it... What else do they even have? They have a lot of fragrances, but I'm trying to remember... Okay, I'm just definitely gonna put it at We Must Protect These Houses. Okay, it's a PNG. If you guys don't know what that means, like it has a transparent background. So it's gonna just blend in, but just know that it's there, okay? So it's just like, We Must Protect YSL. They're an amazing fragrance brand. I would recommend it to, you know, with just about anybody, but I can't say it's like at the top, talented, brilliant, show-stopping, you know what I mean? So I want you guys to know how serious each level is. Okay, moving on to Ariana Grande fragrances. Okay, so I already know at the top of my head, like she doesn't have that many fragrances to think about. Um, ooh, I might ruffle some feathers. Cloud, I used to dislike, I used to not smell it at all. Now I love it. It's literally in my top 10. It's one of my go-to dumb rage fragrances. Um, God is a Woman was so basic. It does remind me a lot of Pear Ink, but I prefer Pear Ink. Um, Rem, it's okay. I don't like Sweet Like Candy. I don't like Ari. And I honestly think something is just wrong with me. The way it sits on my skin, whenever I smell it, it's like I go completely anosmic to it. I can't smell any marshmallow. I can't smell any blackberry or like raspberry, whatever's in the both of them. I'm just not a fan of Cloud Intense. I really want to get rid of it, honestly. So, okay, that all being said, I think the only one I really like, oh, I love Thank You Next. So I like Thank You Next and Cloud. You know, like this leaves us to the mid category. It's called the Midwest because everything about it is mid. I'm sorry. I just want to be fair. Like when we're comparing it to designer brands, you know, I'm forced. I know you can't really compare them to a designer brand because she's not a designer brand, but like we're doing that in this video, right? Like we have to because I put all these together. So that's kind of how it shakes out, okay? Next is Montal. And I know this is kind of strange to put it here because it's kind of like a smaller would you even say indie house? I don't know. It's like a niche house, but there's definitely some niche brands in this video. So Montel Love. Okay. I've literally tried about like 10 plus fragrances from them. Look, I can even show you my Fragrantica 7 here, but I feel like I've sampled a little bit more than that. But here we have Mango Manga, Sweet Vanilla, Vanilla Cake, Vanilla Absolute, Mucolat, Chocolate Greedy, Intense Cafe, you know. And out of all those, the only one I really liked was Chocolate Greedy. The vanillas were so artificial and I did not like them. So, should I dare put it like in misunderstood the assignment? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna put it in a serve here and there. I'll be fair. Because misunderstood the assignment to me is like the whole brand. I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll get to it. Moving on. By Rado. Okay, this is an interesting one because mm, me and this brand, I don't know how we feel. So I have By Rado in my fragrantica as well. You can see all these, but I honestly smelled all of them. Like I was at the By Rado counter and I'm almost positive they had every single one that hadn't been discontinued. Um, and I remember thinking <laughs> it was just so not my speed. But what I can say is I really do appreciate that they don't just come out with, you know, simple vanilla florals or something boring but I just think that they're a little too edgy for me that's just my opinion like I'm not even going to spend money on that because I would never wear it because some of them are just like too leathery or <sighs> strange but I will say Sundays is a really cute one okay this is kind of an example of Byredo playing it safe this is, has like cotton candy and some citrus or something um I don't know how to explain it. Like, I just wasn't a fan. I thought it was just whatever. It kind of reminded me of Love by Killian. Pulp was just one of the most shocking fragrances I've ever smelled. Like, not that it was absolutely terrible. It was just very sour, very strange. Like, sour fruits. Um, not in a good way, in my opinion. And then, 
Mojave Ghost and G Water were just not my speed. Seven Veils was terrible. I remember being so excited to smell Seven Veils because it had like a carrot note. And I was thinking it was gonna be so cool. I don't know, it just wasn't. So the only one I really love is Balda Freak and this smells so good on my skin. It's just really interesting and unique. Like it has notes that I've never heard of before, like different flowers. I'm also gonna put it in a serve here and there, okay? Because I do feel like this is a brand that I'm interested in. Like I, if they come out with new releases, which they did recently, I forgot the name of it. I will always respect if they do something different. Okay, I just realized I have Ariana here twice, so that's funny. Yeah, let's just move on from Byredo. Okay, Burberry. So, here we have Burberry. I've only tried the Her line and then the Burberry Brit. This is kind of hard for me to believe. Okay, there's Body, which I haven't smelled. Okay, none of these I, I've smelled. These are all kind of older ones. Okay, so... I don't know. I don't know because honestly, I don't want to put it in the mid category um, because I've just never smelled all those other fragrances. So I'm I'm honestly going to put it in We Must Protect These Houses. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I love the Her line. It's amazing. My friend loves it too. She I think she just picked it up. And I love the atomizer on that perfume as well. I love the bottle. Um, Burberry Brit I just found out is like my new favorite fragrance and so I honestly think we must protect Burberry and just make sure that they keep coming out with women's fragrances or men's fragrances whatever because I think that they're doing a good job and every flanker is like a little bit different and I, I'm, I'm rocking with Burberry okay next is Chanel okay honestly it's like I don't want to dwell on this but I feel like I have to I don't want to just cop out and just not talk about it, but let's put it in misunderstood the assignment. Again, it's a PNG, you can't really see it, but it's there. I just, there was this conversation going on on TikTok. It, this video had like a million views and it was this girl saying, don't spray your Bath and Body Works around me, I'm wearing Chanel. And it was just so corny and everybody was clowning her in the comments, but it also had a million likes. So clearly a million people agreed with her and you know, maybe it was a joke, but then she posted follow-up videos kind of doubling down on it and kind of, the whole thing was kind of classist to me, if I'm being honest. And that's what I have to say about this because you can argue all day long about how Chanel is more luxurious and all this stuff, but the statement was classist. Let's talk about it because I think that that's a horrible thing to say. And it wasn't a joke because like I said, she doubled down and kept saying that it's just kind of this elitist attitude that she and some people who agreed with her had about you're so much better or like you smell better if you're wearing Chanel and I think that got people riled up because first of all like I personally I've never like even without this TikTok I've never been a fan of Chanel fragrances I feel like maybe I always thought they were just catered to people who weren't me like it's not even about the money okay like I own several designer fragrances I have some niche fragrances it's not about that I just don't feel like they have fragrances that I'm interested in. Personally, I love gourmands. They don't really do that. They don't really do super sweet fragrances either. And they also don't push the envelope. Like even Byredo, they like push the envelope. They put the most unique notes together. Chanel is more focused on creating timeless classic fragrances. Um, and I respect that. Like some people are looking for that. I've just never been a fan and it's fine if you're a fan but I think it's wrong to act like you're holier than thou if you wear Chanel and I don't know who made Chanel like the queen of fragrances Chanel is an iconic brand that has been around for decades but I wouldn't say that they're like the ringleader of the fragrance or I don't know they are definitely selling millions of bottles somebody's buying Coco Mademoiselle and Chanel number five, but certainly I am not. I don't own a single bottle by choice. And that's all I'm saying. And I think the Bath and Water slander has got to stop. That is sometimes the only thing that people can afford. And they should be able to smell good and feel good wearing their $15 body mist. And I know it doesn't last as long, maybe as an eau de parfum, but like, it's just mean. It's so mean spirited to say don't spray your bath and body works around me what do you mean you don't own 
the world, you know, on the universe. And Bath and Body Works does smell really good. Like, this is what I'm getting at, is that Bath and Body Works has evolved a lot. I know back in the day, they used to have just, like, Country Apple and Dark Kiss, which are still really good scents. Like, they're still being sold in 2021. But they have evolved to where they have really amazing scents that are competing, in my opinion, with designer scents. Like, In the Stars, Into the Night, You're the One. Like, I don't know. I just think it's clown behavior. It's clown behavior because you can smell good for a fifth of the price and you're just choosing to be classist. Anyway, I really wanted to get that rant out of the way. I, I really didn't expect to get into it, but it kind of reminded me of it. Dior. This is a brand where I feel like if you want to make those comments, you still shouldn't make those comments. But Dior, I feel like I get it a little bit more. Maybe it's just a personal preference, but I prefer Dior fragrances to Chanel any day of the week. We have the iconic Poison line, which, you know, is you either love or do you love it or you hate it. Uh, J'adore, not my favorite, but that's a popular one. Dior Addict. Then we have the Joy line. I feel like I'm missing some. Oh, the Miss Dior line. I've smelled that as well. They're all just like cute. Like they all, they have something for everybody. I'm not a fan of pure poison or poison, but like that's for a certain generation. Then you have like the 90s hypnotic poison. Then you have the more modern poison girl. I feel like they evolve with the times. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't just continue to make basic or they don't just make one type of fragrance which is a floral they make different types of fragrances they have a spicy like i said dior addict is more spicy i just enjoy them i enjoy them i like how they have different shapes for the bottles and different colors and i respect the brand okay so let's go back let's see where were we um we must protect these houses we must protect Dior. okay the png is honestly pissing me off Next is Dolce & Gabbana. Okay, this is a controversial brand, just in general, but let's stick to the fragrance for now. Where are they? The only one, this is a very popular one. For me, it has a sourness to it that I can't put my finger on. It's still, like, it's it's fine. I'm just not a fan. Then we have Parfum. Parfum? Not a fan. Uh, La Patrice, not a fan. This Dolce line, however, I do really like. Um, Dolce Garden is my favorite, but they all smell really nice. I feel like you can't go wrong with any of the Dolce um, flankers. So, yeah, I'm going to put it in. It's called the Midwest because everything about it is mid. It's true because I feel like Dolce Garden is the only one that I really feel the need to buy. This is all my opinion um, based on how I feel about the brands and like, if I were to recommend it to somebody, this is what I would say, that the brand is just generally kind of middle of the line. They're all pretty good. Like, you can't really go wrong necessarily, but... Okay, Maison Margiela. So they have the replica line. Love the bottles. Love the concept and the creativity and the thought behind every single fragrance. Um, how it has a city and um, a year, like a time period to kind of throw you back into. I love how... The idea of the replica line is just to replicate a certain memory and transport you back to that memory. Um, I love the colors of the juices. I think it's the juice. Yeah, it's the juice, not the bottle. Like, there's so many things I enjoy about the brand. Do I like most of the fragrances? No. Like, I just, I'm not a fan of some of them. Like, Sailing Day, Under the Lemon Trees. It's a nice citrus scent, don't get me wrong, but like, it's whatever. Um... What was I going to say? Lazy Sunday morning. Mm. I'm not a fan of those freshies. A lot of people love them. Bubble bath is like popping off right now on TikTok. I've smelled so many of them, you guys. It's at the bottom of the list. There's so many. I think I've smelled every single one that they've come out with. Well, not the ones that are like black that you can only get online or something, but all the ones, including Fun Fair Evening, actually haven't smelled Music Festival, but I've smelled most of them. I'm going to go with, okay, we must protect these houses. It, it was really hard, you guys. I wanted to put it at the top, but I would just be lying. Like, I don't think you need a lot of the scents. Like, I don't think a lot of the scents are must-haves, um, especially like some of the citruses or the freshies. I feel like you could get that scent for cheaper at some places. But I just, like, I love how they always do something different. I mean, their latest release, I feel like, smelled like every other bee the when the rain stops one i just thought it was such a 
like a throwaway release, but I, I heard a lot of people liked it. But Matcha Meditation and Jazz Club and F By the Fireplace, like these are very innovative scents that they just hop on before everybody else does it. And I don't know, they're just, I respect the house so much. So yeah, we must protect them. Okay, next is Joe Malone. And honestly, like this is going straight into misunderstood the assignment. Okay, I wanted to put it at a serve here and there, but their whole concept, right, is the eau de colognes. So it's like the lowest, I don't know if it's the lowest, like don't freaking quote me, but it's just a very low fragrance oil concentration, lower than EDT, which means it won't last very long on your skin. And I know that's the vibe. The vibe is like not an overpowering scent, just kind of like a your skin but better type of scent. I'm not really into that whole marketing i think it's dumb honestly but anyway the scents themselves i think a lot of them are really nice a lot of them are really clean and slightly fruity but fresh like they just have an effortless kind of i don't know why i'm, I'm thinking model off duty type of vibe but i've just never smelled one and be, been like this is everything like this is so good i've never smelled one and been like this is so yummy um I just saw all of them were like pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's just a, definitely a certain type of person's brand. It's just not for me. Um, I think Blackberry and Bay and English Pear and Freesia and Mimosa and Cardamom and Myrna and Tonka and Blackberry. Did I ever say Blackberry and Bay? The Bluebell one, the Rose one. They're all good. I think they misunderstood, misunderstood the assignment for me because they're not doing anything revolutionary. Um, I'm assuming the longevity would be bad and they're just overpriced. So let's move on. Giorgio Armani. Okay, let's go back to Fragrantica. So we obviously had the sea line, which I'm obsessed with. Well, I don't like sea passion, but ignoring that, the Aqua de Joia, Aqua de Joia line, not a fan, but I'm not a fan of those kind of, you, you guys know at this point, like if it's like one of those fruity, fresh EDT, watery perfumes like I don't want it um and then my way okay oh and then the Privé line but we're not really going to talk about the Privé line I've only smelled one also okay I love C it's one of the best perfumes in my opinion and I love C Fiori but my way is kind of mid to me I'm going to put it at it's called the Midwest because everything about it is mid Okay, I like her. My way is a cute scent. I have the travel spray. Um, I love C, I love C Fiori, but I feel like they do play it safe. Let's say that. They play it safe and I get it. I know the reasons why, luxury this, luxury that, but I can't put it any higher for that reason. For that reason, you're out. Okay, next is Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I know they have Classique, which I don't think I've smelled. I love the Scandal line. And then La Belle, which I do not like. So, oh, and then I smelled La Male. It was okay, not my, not my preference, but I'm going to put it at surprising turn of events. We must protect these houses. And maybe I'm biased, whatever. But I think Scandal, Scandal was just, first of all, I love Jean-Paul Gaultier bottles. I love how they go for this kind of like sexy, I wouldn't even say edgy, but just kind of, I don't know, different, refreshing take. Um, I love the Scandal line, like I said. I just love how it's just dirty. Dirty, I don't know. Sexy is the right word, sweet. They just go there, you know what I mean? Like they're not playing it safe. They're not just giving you some basic floral. Like they're gonna add the honey. They're gonna add the cherry and the Scandal by night. They're just going to give you what you ask for. The longevity is amazing on these. The atomizer, amazing. The bottles feel so luxurious. I love the packaging they come in when they come in those tins. Um, again, I've never smelled Classique, but I love how they have like the body bottles and then the Scandal, it has the legs. Like, honestly, we must protect them. Okay, so far we haven't put anything in the top tier and honestly, maybe nothing will go there, so. Next is Maison Francis Kirk Dijon. Ooh, Lord. I'm putting it on a serve here and there. I said what I said because I only like, and you know, this is such a basic opinion, but I only like 
Baccarat Rouge and the x -Trait. I do not like Gentle Fluidity Gold or Silver. I don't like Grand Soir. I don't like the A La Rose or Amigurus Femme. I know this is such a terrible take. Y'all are going to hate me, but I don't know. My nose changes all the time though. I could literally go there today and all of a sudden be like, I love them. But last time I smelled them and I didn't put it on my skin, I will say that because I did not like it on the tester. But to me, there's a reason Baccarat Rouge and the X-Ray are like their best sellers because I do think, besides the hype, I do think they are their best fragrances. Point blank period. Um, okay, next is Marc Jacobs. Perfect, no. Daisy, okay, it's tired. So, I'm gonna put them in misunderstood the assignment. Okay, I haven't smelled Dot, I haven't smelled Honey. Um, there's a lot of fragrances of theirs I haven't smelled, but just to me, this brand is just, I think the bottles are cute and campy, whatever, but to me, they misunderstood the assignment. I don't know, but a lot of people love them. That is just my opinion. Let's move on. Juliet has a gun. I do like how they try different things. I think the not a perfume thing is so gimmicky and so odd to me, but a lot of people love it. I think what's cool is that it would smell different on everybody. That's kind of the whole point. Um, it's not like I get the marketing of it. I, I don't like it. Um... I think mm, is really nice. I love how they did Moscow Mule, literally my favorite cocktail, but it's just so different. Like who would have thought to make a Moscow Mule scent them and it smells really good. I'm not a fan of vanilla vibes, but I like how they did a salty vanilla. Not everybody does that. And pear ink is really nice too. Um, In my opinion, if I'm being honest, I'm gonna put it in a serve here and there because I do think, you know, and I haven't smelled everything they have. They have a lot of scents that aren't in Sephora, like Sunny Side Up. And I can't think of the other ones. So I would love to smell those and see how I feel. Did I mark Jacobs twice? Okay, I marked Jacobs and Ariana twice. I don't know why. If I were to smell those, maybe I would put it higher. Parfums de Marley. Considering I only love Delina Exclusive, I'm putting it in the mid category. Delina Exclusive is my signature scent. The longevity is amazing. The packaging is amazing. Atomizer is amazing, whatever. But, I think some of their other launches are just questionable. At least recently, Oriana just really sent me over the edge with them where I was like, what are y'all doing? This is a copycat of Love, Don't Be Shy. It's boring. It's uninspired. No. Um, the original Delina, yes, it's a classic. It's not my favorite. I prefer exclusive, but I, I appreciate them for that. But Cassili, for example, I was not a fan. I don't really like Meloria or Safanad. They kind of smell too simple for my, in my opinion, for the cost. So yeah, I'm gonna have to put it in the mid category. They would be higher if they had other hits similar to Delina. Britney Spears fragrances. Okay, I haven't smelled all of hers. I've only tried stuff from the Fantasy line. So I'm honestly gonna put it in the mid as well because there are some flankers that have been quite mid to me. And then there are some that are really amazing. So next is by Killian. And I used to love Angel Share, and then I told y'all it made me nauseous. Their whole rectangular bottle line, I have mixed feelings about. I don't like Love, Don't Be Shy. I don't like Forbidden Games. I don't like Back to Black. I just, Princess though. I haven't smelled the rest of the My Kind of Love collection besides Princess, so I feel like Killing has so many scents that it's hard for me to rank them, but I will anyway. I honestly am going to put them at We Must Protect These Houses, even though I have my feelings. I think that they do try. I love the idea of the licorice collection, you know, incorporating Killin Hennessy's knowledge about liquor and all that stuff and how realistic they make the liquor notes. Um, I think that even though I don't love everything that they come out with, they just do different stuff. And I just really like that. I love the My Kind of Love. I mean, I don't love the bottles of the My Kind of Love, but I like how that whole line was just more affordable and just different from their usual. It was more, I don't want to say it, like maybe beginner friendly in the sense that the fragrance profiles weren't too complex. Okay, so next is Versace. And let's see. 
I already know this is not going to go very high. So I'm not a big fan of the Crystal Noir at all. The Bright Crystal, very mid. Uh, the Dylan's, mm. Eros, mm. I'm probably not. I'm probably going to put it in a serve here and there. So, you know, I want to put it in the mid, but I just feel like it's like less than mid. It's like, there's a serve here and there, you know, but nothing that I think is worth the price, if I'm being honest. But I do like some of the Bright Crystals. I think some of the Dylans are cute. Tom Ford. So I want to put them at the bottom, but I have to put them at a serve here and there because I can't disregard Lost Cherry, which is one of the best fragrances of our time. Um, tobacco Vinny, not for me. I wouldn't wear it, but I feel like it would smell amazing on other people. But besides that, I literally think the rest of the range is something else. I, I, would, I would rather use different words, but I don't want to be too negative. I actually sat at a Tom Ford counter and smelled every single one. Granted, I did not put them on my skin and I could have been having a bad day. But I remember just thinking a lot of them were not, first of all, not worth the price tag, point, point blank period. And second of all, some of them were just really, really strong and maybe I just wasn't used to those scents. But like, for example, like Jasmine Rouge and Lavender Extreme, like some of them were just so, ooh, I don't know. So, okay, you guys. I'm gonna do some moving around, and I know this is so bad. I don't know if people normally do this in their tier videos, but I feel like I was being a little too harsh because I set the standard way too high for the top level, but I'm gonna have to move some stuff there just to make it fair and like have it make sense. So I'm gonna put Maison Margiela in Talented, Brilliant, Incredible, Amazing, Showstopping because Although I am not a personal fan, like I'm trying to be objective somewhat, even though this is obviously my subjective biased opinion. Um, I think that what they do as a whole, as I mentioned earlier, is just talented, brilliant. Like somebody is really coming up with the concepts in their corporate office and I appreciate that. So, and they have a lot of good sense that I love and that other people love. And I just think that they deserve their hype. And I know this is weird, okay? But I'm going to move Burberry because out of the scents that I've smelled, they're all hits. Like, I would recommend all of them. And I know that's, like, kind of strange. I don't know. I feel weird leaving Dior and YSL in the We Must Protect These Houses. But that's still an amazing rank. I just feel like they have more that I've smelled that maybe have disappointed me a little bit. So that's kind of what's bringing them down a little bit. And obviously, they're more... They're very iconic. They, like, I'm not taking any anything away from them. I'm just saying for me and what I smell, whatever, okay? Okay, so on to Kaoli. I'm going to put it at We Must Protect These Houses. It's true. I think that the atomizer is amazing. Bottles, stunning. I just love how the brand engages on social media. I think that the scents are always very thought out. And they have really nice scent profiles that you can just tell that, again, a lot of thought went into it. They're working with really amazing perfumers. And I just love a lot of their scents. Like Vanilla 28, Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper, Eden, and I think something else are like some of my favorite perfumes ever. Um, I, I think they're all on par with design or on par with niche. I love it. Okay, Victor and Rolf is the last one. And I have to put them at misunderstood the assignment. Okay, wait, no, I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm putting them at a serve here and there because I forgot about Bonbon, which I do love Bonbon and all of its flankers. I think it's an amazing sweet gourmand scent. I think that they overdid it on the patchouli with flower bomb, but that's just my opinion. So many people love flower bomb and flower bomb nectar, but honestly, I don't like any of the flankers of flower bomb either. Even the newest one, Ruby Orchid, it smelled like love, don't be shy to me. Maybe not love, I don't know. It's like a sweet, powdery, airy fragrance. Like I just thought it was kind of boring. That is our list. Um, it's definitely something, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. I feel like I definitely ruffled some feathers. I feel really negative after filming this video, but you know, it was supposed to be fun. I, I was just having fun, that's it. Like, so... <laughs> I will catch you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I will have the links down below to the tier maker, my link tree, whatever your hearts desire. Catch you guys in my next one. Bye.